Now you've seen what's happening in the content world, you've also seen the biggest EV launch of the week, of course, on Tech Today. But we call it the Tech Today Multiverse, or Tech Today exists in the Business Today Multiverse. Because we're on stands, we're online, and we're on air, of course, on your favorite technology show. This, I like to say, is the Flipverse. So for this segment, welcome to the Flipverse. Now, at some point or the other on the Tech Today platform, you would have seen a review of each of these products. In fact, we've been to the launch event of each of these products everywhere around the world, spoken to their global teams and gotten you the lowdown on this technology. Sometimes the talk is about how many flips and folds, what the water resistance and dust resistance ratings are like, and sometimes it comes down to one elementary problem. If you're trying to give a screen, an external display to the customer, how big does it need to be? So it's kind of interesting. If you start off with the Samsung Flip, it's a very minimal screen with minimal notifications and widgets. Very similar to old flip phones. And Samsung's had four generations to get it right. Sells a lot. I've seen a lot of Samsung Flip devices, but that's also because it's Samsung. Then came along the Oppo Flip with a far more functional utilitarian screen, but you were still left asking for more. Maybe the ultimate, the culmination, was in this particular Moto Razr 40 Ultra, which you got a first look of on Tech Today, with a screen that is massive and actually covers the entire external display with so much more utility. You can play games on the screen, you can also get turn-by-turn -turn navigation on Google Maps. They've also tied up with Spotify to give you, well, that external display experience. But that's what the flip phones in the market give you at this price point, and that price point is not cheap nearly 90,000 rupees with cashbacks and sales and offers in the 80,000 to 90,000 rupee range. This is what you can get in India. Let's give you the specs on screen because that's the boring part. We actually want to talk about, well, a bigger problem and a bigger solution. Well, you've got the specs on screen and largely they're the same. If you look at the Samsung and the Motorola's, they come with a Snapdragon 8 Gen 1. And then this one comes with a MediaTek Dimensity, which is a very, very capable processor, but it's not necessarily the processor of choice with a lot of other foldable devices. But things are changing in the foldable market. And as you can see the displays, this one, which has just come out, the Moto Razr 40 Ultra, seems to be the most useful. When you open up these devices, that's yet another opportunity for the Moto Razr 40 Ultra to shine. That's because it comes with a nearly stock Android experience. That means the experience that you get on the Motorola, of course with its legacy, with the acquisition with Google, and now of course it's run by Lenovo, you actually get a pixel-like experience on this device. So if you ever wanted a pixel flip phone, this is the closest that it gets to in this current market. Now there's news that OnePlus is launching a foldable. Will it be a flip? Will it be a fold? We'll have to see. When it comes to camera performance, even the Oppo Flip device does a fairly decent job. But honestly, there's something about the Samsung experience when it comes to flagship level stuff that when you hold this phone, it feels a lot more flagship. Maybe it's their marketing. It's also the fact that Samsung has one big advantage inherently, which is, of course, their distribution and the ecosystem that Samsung's building on. From all of these devices, until Apple enters the fray with flip devices, the Samsung really has you covered. But then, if you compare all of them, there are pros and cons with all these devices. I really think it comes down to the display, but you must write in to us and tell us if you're looking for, well, a hamburger fold device, like the Samsung Fold, or even the Techno Phantom Fold, then those are productivity devices. You can do so much on the external screen, so much inside as well. And they're also great for content consumption. With these devices, do you just need a flip form factor, which just gives you notifications up top? In fact, the cheaper Motorola Razr, the standard one, doesn't have flagship specs, and it also, well, comes with a similar setup like this, a much smaller screen. It's a lot more reasonable, around 50 to 60,000 rupees. So you have to make that pick out there. But I feel like if you look at these devices launched within one year from three competing companies, it looks like generation one, generation two, and then the final generation. But that also means Samsung might be feeling the heat and because they've gotten so good with foldables and they are, well, the first movers in the foldable space and really enjoy a big chunk of the market, maybe Samsung at Galaxy Unpacked next week will be unveiling the Flip 5 and of course the Fold and the entire ecosystem of products. But I have a feeling that at Galaxy Unpacked, 
and this is what the leaks say as well, we will have a much bigger external display. Well, if you're on the market for a flip device, my advice would be, well, pick none of these up for the next four or five days. Wait for Galaxy Unpack and see what Samsung will be revealing to us. I have a feeling, of course, it's going to be a power-packed game changer of a device. So there will be, well, a much updated rendition of this flip device to compete with this one. But if you're just in a hurry to pick it up and you want to buy it as soon as you saw tech today, at this point, this is the true value for money flip device, the Moto Razr. If you like the video, do like, comment, share and subscribe.